20, he separates, he's to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Florida State, Warwick got a third down. Winky looking, Winky, wants to throw the knockout punch to Warwick, Warwick open, touchdown, he does a touchdown, he did catch it, touchdown, Florida State, oh, Peter Warwick, how'd you do that? Herman Whitfield to the left side, a hole to the 40, Herman Whitfield to the 30, to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, up and down. the snap. Winston rolling right. Close the pass on the other. It's caught! It's caught! It's caught! Touchdown up as well! Calvin Benjamin! We're doing it for everybody. We're doing it big all over the country. All over the world. And I'm proud. I'm proud to say I'm a Florida State Seminole. This is the Garnet and Old Podcast with your hosts, Ryan Eastman and Vince Ciccarelli. Man, we are three weeks away from camp starting. We are just about a month away from college football as a as a whole starting, and maybe maybe five five and a half weeks from uh, Florida State taking the field uh, September third against uh, LSU. But guess what? Before then, it's seven o'clock. It's a Thursday. It's the Garn Old Show. Vince, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing great, Ryan. It's the Garn Old Show. No inside info. No contacts. No problem. I think it's 45 days, Ryan, until the kickoff. Mm. Um, I actually went through the calendar and, you know, purposefully counted. I don't have a countdown. Go- I, mean, I need to set the countdown on my computer so I, so I see it. Uh, and we are five days away from some really uh, non-news that's going to happen at the ACC kickoff. Yeah, really, really cool stuff. Uh, we have a few cool, I think, interesting topics today, right? So, you know, we're still in that. Uh, I guess the middle of summer lull, I mean, it's about to kick up in high gear, especially for Garden and Old and for FSU football headed into this fall. But we do have some really interesting news. Uh, Vince, um, until today, I didn't know this. I swear that Jack Nicholas, uh, Jack Nicholas's grandson is Nick O'Leary. I, I mean, had you ever heard that before, Vince? I had heard that a long time ago. I wasn't sure if it was true. Like just yeah. because people say things doesn't mean it's true. But, um, but Nick O'Leary, uh, apparently, in some form or fashion, will be joining FSU staff. I'm going to assume a quality analyst to start out with, but maybe, may, hey, listen, is there a better tight end to maybe have some help with the tight end room than Nick O'Leary? I mean, what a great time for him to join join the crew, right, with the tight end room becoming what it is now. Um, the Golden Cub returns. And we're not sure, you know, it's a, it won't be an on-field spot for sure. Um, but, um, yeah, that's that's the rumor anyway. There's been nothing formally announced. But, yeah, I mean, I, I loved him as a player. Uh, I, I got to see him up close and personal after a game one time. Um, big dude, uh, you know, signing autographs and things like that. He's good with the fans. And, uh, yeah, that's exciting. It is. Uh, and Vince, we're about, we're approaching the 10 year anniversary of the infamous drop in the shoulder on Clemson from Nick O'Leary when we were absolutely hammering Clemson in Clemson when they were ranked number three in the country. And what a game that was. I cannot believe. And Vince, listen, you're the old part of this show. So Definitely. it's starting just now to happen to me. I'm 35, where, you know, a majority of the glory years of the nineties, you know, I was a child, I was going to the games or watching the games with my father. But when you're, when you're a kid, it's a lot different than when you're, you know, at the school and, you know, post-graduation and working. But I can tell you in no way does it feel like 10 years ago was the national championship year. It feels like just yesterday that we were holding that trophy right in Pasadena. And I can only imagine how, it feels for you in 93 and, and 99. I'm sure it feels the same way, right? Yeah. It, I mean, those definitely seem farther away. They definitely do. Um, but the the most recent one, it, it does feel like it was recent. Um, and, and that's, you know, try not to live in the past, but, you know, we've taken some, we've taken some shots here in the last few years. Right? Yeah. So uh, it is hard to believe. And that, that iconic de- demolishing of that 
defender by Jack Nicholas's grandson. Yeah. Um, it was a sight, was a sight to behold. Uh, I'll never forget it. And, you know, just like never forgetting, uh, uh, Greg Jones decapitating Mm -hmm. pretty much a North Carolina defender, um, kind of in the same vein, right? Yeah. And what kind of speaks to this, like, uh, shortened time, you know, as as you get older and you live more, more seasons and more games, things kind of feel like it wasn't so far ago, so long ago that something happened. Just put in perspective, and so this is Mark Norvell's fourth season we're coming into. So if you were to put that in the Jimbo perspective, we're approaching the halfway point of Jimbo's tenure with Florida State. Right. Which is bizarre, right? Because Mike Norvell mm-hmm. still feels new as far as like, he doesn't feel like he's been here that long, but this will be his fourth season. It was the 2020, 2021, 22, uh, you know. And so it's one of those things like it blows my mind sometimes how quick time goes but guess what here we I, are we're about to relive what 10 years ago brought and i hope we relive the clemson moment where jack nicholas's grandson dropped that arm and i hope i am there to see it because ladies and gentlemen i do want to assure all of you that i will be attending the fsu clemson game in death valley representing the garden old show live in clemson so what's great is Vince will be covering the LSU game, uh, which is the neutral site in Orlando. I will be covering the Clemson away game. We have two away games that we're going to be covering live from the Fishware Brewing Company. So when it comes to away game, neutral site, and uh, you know coverage, Gar and Old has you covered. And Vince, I cannot wait to be on the field watching in Death Valley you know, seeing the whole rub in the rock and hearing the most annoying C L E M S O. And then a big pause N chance around me, but guess what? This is probably the best year, best chance we've had to beat them. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. I think a couple of things to be aware of. Um, it's been a long time since I've been there. 92, I think, um, it's in the middle of nowhere and, uh, it's, it is really in the middle of nowhere. And also you got to be careful as you don't get run over by a bus right before the game. Yeah. Um, because I think there's some bus routes that, that, you know, just kind of go around the stadium. Which some um, seem like it's impressive, like that happens uh, from what I hear. But uh, it's kind of cool because I get to go to the Clemson game. That's my birthday weekend. And then the next day following that, Vince, uh, we're going to be in Charlotte because we're going to see Aerosmith live in Charlotte, North Carolina that Sunday. Yeah, what's the oh the Sunday after the game? The uh, the the next day following the Clemson game. Yeah, in Charlotte, North Carolina, will be the Aerosmith concert. We're going to be uh, my wife and a friend of ours is going to be going to that. You are doing it right, my friend. Yeah. Um, you are going to enjoy that trip. Um, and you know when we were trying to decide which games it made sense to do the away show from uh, Fishweir, uh, the Clemson one did not come up. And uh, because it turns out uh, you're going to be going to this game. So I'm very happy about that. And I'll handle the LSU game. And we got just, just like you said, we got you covered. Garnet Old has you covered. And what's really cool is, uh, you know, I've never been to Clemson. So it'll be a first for me. And it's funny because we, the wife and I started batting around the idea of going and we were like, you know, I'm, I'm going to email my rep at the, at the Seminole Boosters. And, and by the way, if you don't already give to the Seminole Booster, please do. Uh, I emailed my rep and he said, well, Ryan, today's the last day to request those tickets. And I looked and verified because I thought he was trying to salesman me, you know, kind of like get them now. They're almost sold out kind of thing. Sure enough, I found a, a very hidden, which this is how things with FSU tickets generally go, buried deep down in a article that today that day was the last day to to request those tickets so just by chance happenstance we requested four tickets we'll see if we only get you know two or three but um hopefully we get all four but you know what it might be a little pricey but it ain't as expensive as uh going to ireland vince it is not uh you got in right under the wire there um the uh the seminole gods were keeping an eye on you there Mm -hmm. um the uh, Seminole gods are not keeping an eye on me and my wallet when it comes to the Ireland trip for next year. 
Um, I saw a friend of mine that I follow on Twitter posted some photos of uh, sc screenshots of some of the patches, uh, the package dot, uh, costs. And some of you may already know this, uh, but I had not, I had not clicked in far enough to see this. Mm -hmm. And let's just say that uh, it was above, it was, it was over and above three grand per person, uh, not including flights. That's pennies to you, Vince. You're a rich man. I'm telling you. It's, it's, um, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a more economical way. Yeah. Uh, okay, listen. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I don't need a five-star hotel. Sure. I don't need that. Yeah, and you don't need the, the one specific flight that probably they got, uh, you know, they themselves got some rates. I, I think it's, they're trying to get people on convenience and uh, to get you the package, which makes sense. And some people will happily pay that. But for many people who have traveled maybe internationally before, yeah, you can probably piece together a better deal. There's no doubt you can. And like you said, this, this is a package deal. And I'm sure everything other than the flights are, are kind of included in that. They've probably got some, uh, some excursions built in there, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you definitely, you know, if you're looking to do it, I, I'm pretty sure you can get over there for less than, than that screenshot that I saw. Sure. It, it was, it was like, Oh, that's what we're doing today. I see how that is. So come hell or high water vents. The real question is, are you going to find a way? I'm, I'm trying to find a way. Um, I mean, as we right now, it's, uh, it, it's a dream, Ryan. There's yeah. a, there's a, you know, there, there's an oasis off in the distance mm -hmm. and I can see it. It's kind of blurry Brick road. It's a yellow brick road. Yeah. It's kind of hazy. It's mm -hmm. kind of blurry. And as it get closer, it gets clearer and clearer. And at some point that those decisions have to be made, you know, are we going to put deposits down? Are we going to, you know, are we going to do this? Yeah. Um, my wife and I are both, we want to, for sure. Never been to Ireland. Um, and you know, a lot of, great feedback from people that I know that have been there. Yep. Uh, and so our, if we, if, if we are going to do it uh, and I hope you go Ryan as well, it's going I to will be, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's going to be um, get there kind of before the game, yep. you know, enjoy the pregame festivities, the game early on, and then tag on some additional sure. stuff afterwards so we can travel a little bit and see the country. So, can I t let me let me speak to why Vince? So a couple things we talk about garden old coverage, and I think it's important to remember this that we we want to have a few things here and a few things there. Mistake I could be mistaken, but are we not opening next year? Uh, not opening next year. Aren't we playing in Atlanta next year against Alabama? I'm not sure about that. I've not looked that far ahead. So, Jamie, uh, Jamie, can you pull that up for me? <laughs> I'm doing a little Joe Rogan reference there. Yeah. Um, I'm going. Hold on. Let me. What, yeah, I mean, it's probably easy to find, right? So, 2024 FSU this is football. terrible show production here. Hey, listen. I want to get the right people. Okay, so it was not the Miami uh, Miami year. We're playing Notre Dame. That's who it was. So we're playing in Notre Dame. Um next next season and uh and i missed the last time we went to to notre dame and i'm glad i did because uh willie taggart uh did not have us prepared or even close to the stadium for our players to stay so i've always we're me and the wife talked about this part of this clemson trip this year is we want to start checking off some bucket list items regarding fsc football and college football in general never been to clemson i've always wanted to go to notre uh to to south bend I go to a very classic stadium, Notre Dame. Uh, what's sad is I've always wanted to go to an LSU game, in which we did, but we didn't get to a Baton Rouge. Uh, someday I would like to go to the Big House, Boise. I would have loved to have, uh, you know, actually been able to do that game. Um, you know, so there's some some check mark item games, and so I, I think I'm gonna save the money and make the trip to South Bend next year. And Vince, and this is a bargaining chip for for you and uh, your wife. Uh, cruises aren't cheap 
and you can kind of position it, Vince, as, listen, we either got to book a cruise or we got to book this here Ireland trip, and, and I'm leaning towards the cruise. And then you get her to lean in and say, nay, nay, we're going to go to Ireland. So I have a cruise already booked in February, Vince, a very nice cruise with a lot of people going and everything. It's going to be a great time. And then South Bend, Indiana. Mm-hmm. So cost conscious, you know, got to be mindful, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The wife listens and watches this show. So you've given away the, given mm-hmm. away the, uh, the uh, tactic there. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, part of my Florida state experience as listeners know, being in the chiefs, I got to go to a lot of the places, Ryan, that, that you're talking about. I've been to uh, Clemson. I've been to Notre Dame. I've been to uh, LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it's long ago, and some of those memories have faded. Wouldn't mind going again. So, yeah, absolutely. You should take the tour. You know, do as many of those as you can. Yeah. Um, but it also helps us out, right, from the show perspective, where yeah. – one of us, you know, if, if it does happen to work out and I am in Ireland next year, mm-hmm. uh, it'll be it'll be a great, uh, great thing. And if you're going to the Notre Dame game, we're going to have that covered, too. So this yeah. is awesome. And, and it's funny, just a, a quick sidebar here is that I was thinking about uh, a take we had a few months ago, with the conference realignment stuff, um, you know, and I've kind of leaned towards more SEC. You've kind of leaned more Big Ten ironically vince there are more stadiums that would be on my bucket list more uh away games that would be on my bucket list of stadiums uh in the big 10 side than in the sec i don't know that i care to go to you know rocky top i don't know that i care to go see um you know old uh, mississippi state or Ole miss but i would love to go see ohio state and michigan State, state penn state those are classic right it's all the big Ten's all about classic that the the very forefathers of college football that's how it's always felt to me right and so yeah i want to start <laughs> making those trips and you know first time in my life in the last couple of years that we have the means to to actually make those trips you know and it was a dream in their 20s i would have loved to have done it but it's just not in the cards i mean i was thinking just the other day i would have loved to have been in pasadena i was at four state you know living in tallahassee um but listen it's only making uh, the time fourteen dollars an hour working as a manager at Chick Fil A, and uh, it wasn't in the cards. But we already know. I've made my wife well aware that if we make it to the national championship this year, everything is cleared off our calendars. The money will find itself. I don't care where we get it from, and we will be going to the national championship because I am not going to miss the next opportunity. Because you never know, Vince, when it's going to come again. When it was twenty thirteen, I thought we'd be there for years with Jimbo. Yeah, we um, we should know better by now that things are not permanent. So, uh, but yeah, I was close to going and on the last one, didn't get to go. And here we are 10, uh, ten years later. Yep. You know, Ryan, I'm going to uh, segue a little bit. You mentioned um, realignment a little mm-hmm. bit ago. Um, we haven't really heard much on that and we probably won't hear much on that. Yep. Although... Um, Supposedly, there's some news coming out at the end of this week about uh, the Pac-12's media deal. Yep. So we'll see how that goes. You know, that's been, you know, the commissioner kicking the kick, kicking that can down the road for months. Yeah. Um, how about but San, I Diego, think, San Diego State wearing it too? Right. So I think that you know maybe if that if that information comes out, might uh, kind of clear up some things. Um, and give us the possibility or, or, or show some more possibilities between the Pac-12 and the Big 12, right? Yep. Um, I, was on a, I was on a Big 12 show this past Tuesday um, and was a guest on there talking about this. And um, let me tell you, as much as we are trying to keep in tune with realignment, you know, yeah. um, that whole contingent, they are, that's all they talk about. Yeah. And, 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 because they're on the cusp of it all. We will too. Yeah. When eight, when Florida State's on the cusp, it'll be Absolutely. our entire show. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but but I I bring that up to say um, we're gonna we're we're gonna work to have a guest on our show next week, um, who is a who is a Big Twelve um, 
influencer, uh, in influencer uh, uh, streamer, uh, podcaster. Um, and he will have quite a bit of information. And we wanted to wait until after this Pac-12 thing hopefully yep. comes out. Um, so that way our listeners um, and our watchers and our followers can get an idea of what a different region of the com- of the country, a different region of college football is dealing with. And uh, they can bring some great insight to that. Absolutely. And, you know, what will be awesome next week, Vince, is that by the time the Garden Old Show happens next week, we would have heard, uh, been finished or at least completing the ACC uh, kickoff, uh, which starts um, next week on uh, Tuesday and goes through, I think the last day is on Thursday. Uh, but um, Mike Norvell's uh, press conference and his time with media will be on Wednesday of next week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really excited because we're going to have a big show next week. We're going to have a guest on talking about conference realignment. We're going to be talking about ACC kickoffs. Um, what was announced uh, is that the members of, of the team that are going to be going to the uh, ACC football kickoff. So Jordan Travis, Jared Verse, and Kalen Deloach, uh, the first two, not a surprise at all. I don't know that I had an expectation on who the third person would be. I thought they might go with, um, you know, a Johnny Wilson or something like that. Um right. But Kalen Deloach's personality, I think, is what they want to put out there. They like to these days, not in the Jimbo days or the Willie days, but these days, they like to put out the the real great media type uh, players right. out there. And Jordan Travis and Jerevers speak for themselves. They're amazing. They're going to be all Americans. Kalen Deloach, though, he's a fun interview, huh? Yeah, he is. Uh, I enjoyed. I enjoy listening to him. I mean, a school is not going to take uh, a stick in the mud. Yeah. Right? Um, but you also want to make sure you send someone that is going to frame and talk about your program and where you are in the way that you want to. Like this is all about the messaging. Yeah. And and so, um, you know, Kalen De- uh, Deloach, I, you know, like you said, very good good person to listen to. Um, you don't have to worry about the things that he's going to say. Uh, he's intelligent, a uh, full on team guy. And uh, it's a good is a good choice. The interesting thing about this, Ryan, is like when you were saying that um, you weren't really sure who the third person was going to be. That is a great that's a great thing. Like, yeah, there's so many options. There were so many options that um, that the that the coaching staff could have chosen to do this. And that wasn't always the case. Not that right. And, and you know, but there's more to come, too, because. Um, recruiting has gone pretty well. We did lose a, a receiver, um, over to Florida this week. However, from what I read on some message boards and some insider posts, uh, that that wasn't a shock and that it wasn't, uh, it's kind of been the, basically that player's been visiting other campuses, uh, only for the last two or three months and right. not coming back to Florida state. But there's one thing I want to talk about and specific to recruiting that I'm a little nervous about Charles Lester, five-star defensive back i don't know if he's playing Mm -hmm. us or if he's playing colorado because in the last two days he retweeted a post that said uh is you know charles lester in 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 it's four state in danger of losing charles lester to colorado and Deion sanders an article he retweeted it now that could be taken two ways depending on the lens you want to put on it could be put like he likes he likes that he's hearing like these crazy stories about, you know, what's going to happen with the recruitment. And then he ends up signing with FSU and saying it was never in doubt. Or it could be that he's, you know, kind of get feet in the fire and, and hyping himself up to make that choice. I'm going to lean and this isn't just from my fan. hat. I'm going to lean on the first because unlike um, oh, what's the what's his name that went to Colorado? and burned us um, um that's how much i i was disappointed is that travis I, hunter travis, travis hunter. hunter i pushed him out of my memory unlike him who it was pretty much the day of and it was just the lack of hearing anything that led up to the announcement i don't see a player rubbing a team's nose in it like setting them up on social media media saying posting articles about you know, am i gonna be going to to Colorado with Deion Sanders. It seems like the reverse. Like, look at this article. This is 
you know, put it out there for to get some social media attention and then just signing where you want to go. So what, what's your read on that? I mean, my read on it is that this kind of stuff happens every year and, mm-hmm. and we're just, we're, we're, we're kind of gun shy about it because it happened to us. Right. Yep. And it happened to us in a very public way. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I don't know how much of this is accurate or not, but it seems like, you know, the coaching staff was pretty much unaware until the very last minute. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that can or will happen again. And what I mean by that is they're not going to be in the dark. Yeah. They're, they are doing what they need to do. They're not going to be blindsided by it. If it happens, it, Hey, if it happens, it happens. I mean, kids are going to make decisions. They're going to go where they're going to where they want to go. And Deion Sanders is a defensive back. This kid is a defensive back. Deion Sanders is from Southwest Florida. This kid is from Southwest Florida. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of similarities there. And when the greatest cornerback, one of the greatest football players, you know, to ever play the game, you know, starts, you know, showing you attention and love. Sure. It's probably kind of hard to not think about that. Yeah. Um, I am confident in all of the relationship that's been built. And I am confident that, um, I'm confident that if something does play out, it's yeah. it's not going to be because it's been under undercover for so long, right? It will be a last minute, like almost like switch of heart, right? Yeah, throwing the hat um, away. But that that all being said, I still think he's going to sign with us. And as far as him tweeting, you know, or retweeting that. There's been so much publicity and so much uh, uh, social media attention on him and the fact that, you know, everybody picks him to go to Florida State. Yeah. Right? Almost so that it's a done deal. Yeah, like that's, balls that's, are in. That's the way it's been projected. Mm-hmm. And if and I don't know Charles Lester, but if Charles Lester wants any kind of um, hype or anxiety around his actual commitment. You put it out there. You put it out there to kind of man, kind of manufacture it a little bit. In the meantime, we as fans have to live through it and have to, and I, you know, you and I aren't moderating message boards and things sure. like that. Thank goodness. But I'm sure that that turmoil is all stirred up. Yeah. Um, ultimately, if Charles Lester comes, great. Yeah. If he doesn't, we're still in great shape, people. I mean. I'm I'm not worried anymore, and I and I've really never been worried about a singular player ever. Yeah, um, I mean, really, just, you just hope to get at least one or or the other of uh, between Charles Lester and KJ Bolden, which you know people are the the rumors are he's seriously considering Florida State over you know Ohio State, Georgia, and I think Clemson has kind of fallen off, and that would be awesome if we got both. But you know, it's recruiting; you never know. I mean, what what is a surprise though is that. You know, the Northwestern story, for those of you who hadn't read the Northwestern story, what's happened up there, do yourself a favor. There's tons of publications out there. Just Google search Northwestern Northwestern scandal. You're going to find a, a big article somewhere from some big time source. Yeah, some listen. craziness going in there, which which means their entire football team, without any problems at all, would be able to enter the transfer portal and be able to play immediately. And that is what's happening with Justin Cryer, who's a linebacker and – Lord knows we would love to have a linebacker and he's a good linebacker. And there's some rumblings that Florida state is in contact uh, and he might be a good landing spot for him. We don't know. I think it's too early to know, but it is fun to imagine that uh, three weeks out from the start of our camp that we get a power five linebacker, just like that added to our team. That's what the transfer portal has done. There's a lot of negatives, Vince, yeah. but it can add this like, it can change the outlook of a team. Just look at what Johnny Wilson did here last year. Like it can change your entire team in a snap of a finger. And we have benefited almost exclusively benefited from it. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it um, because of what's going on there and if you, and if you don't want to read all the nitty gritty details about that, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, Just know that some stuff was going on there and the coaches are gone and, 
and, and not not just the football coach, by the way. And um, and so that means that those players are allowed to enter the portal. This is not a normal portal time, right? They're allowed to enter the portal, and and they can be they, they can tr- switch schools and be el- be eligible to play. Um, this particular linebacker, um, his nickname is Juice, mm. uh, Justin Juice Cryer. Uh, we actually recruited him out of high school. Uh, he ended up choosing Northwestern. I think he's a. This is he's ending his freshman year. I think. Yeah. So maybe a sophomore. Year. A really, it's one of our. It would be one of our favorite kind of recruits to get in the transfer portal, which is players that still have years of eligibility left. Right. Right. And so we were. You know, we recruited him and offered him last year or the year before. I can't remember which. But um, so there's already diligence done on him, and. Um, yep. So, hey, we've been saying it. The linebacker room leaves a little bit to be desired. And sometimes, yeah. when that's the case, you just got to start throwing bodies at it. Yep. And, you know, uh, and this kid is more than that, for yeah. sure. Uh, I was just closing out that window when we were talking about the 2024 schedule. I did, how did I not know that our home opener next year at, at Doe Campbell is against Memphis? Isn't that fun? Oh, yeah, I've forgotten about that, too. How about that, huh? Yeah, so we'll go from Georgia Tech and Ireland to playing Mike Norvell's old team uh, at, at Doe Campbell, and then we play at Notre Dame. I mean, the schedule next year, as far as if you're a season ticket holder or a booster, it's a lot of fun. Like, there's a lot of teams on there. Just the way it works out, because North Carolina's on the schedule next year. Like, so there's a lot of, a lot of goodies, uh, which I'm excited the only down game next year is Charleston Southern. Like, that's it. Georgia Tech would have been kind of a eh game if it hadn't been. Ireland's the only reason that that game's intriguing right. at all. Um, but like hey, Charleston talk- Southern has been pretty good, right? Yeah. Or no, not Charleston Southern. Who, who is it? The, I'm Southern sorry. Uh, Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina. Is the, yeah. yeah, they've been pretty good. Not yeah. Charleston Southern. They're a darling on the uh, betting odds. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, uh, man, I'm telling you what I've, I'm seeing. I've never been a much of a gambler, Vince, but some of these lines that I'm seeing and some of the point totals I'm seeing creep out. I'm just like, these are seem really wrong. <laughs> this is how you could uh, get all your money to go to Ireland. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but you got to spend money to make money. And uh, as far as investing, uh, while we're talking about that, really want to just remind everyone that the fall is going to be a wild time here at Garden and Old. Of course, we're doing our live show. You're watching it right now, every Thursday. So that will continue into the football season. Uh, and then we have uh, on home games, uh, a lot 12, we will be doing pre and post game shows. Come by, you'll see our tent. Come say hello, maybe get some swag. Maybe get a hot dog. Maybe we'll have some food, who knows. But come, come to our tailgate, say hello, and we'll be uh, recording live. And then on two away games this season, uh, we will be uh, Boston College and Wake Forest. We'll be at the Fishweir Brewing Company here locally in Jacksonville, Florida. So we're kind of unofficially becoming Jacksonville's number one place for seminal coverage, Vince. And, and that's exciting because I feel like in Jacksonville, for those of you that don't know, Jacksonville is kind of considered Gainesville, East Gainesville, right? Mm. Most of the stores, most of the sports shops around town, for every – tiny floor stick section of clothing and, and gear. They have this massive university of Florida section. And so we're really outnumbered here in Jacksonville, Florida. So we're trying to bring a collusion of Florida state fans and say, you're not alone. Come with us, come hang out with us at fish. We're brewing. We're going to have an amazing time. They have really great beers. They have a garden and a garnet and golden ale. So they have a FSU themed beer while you're watching Florida state. What could be better Vince? It's delicious. The Garnet and Golden Ale is delicious. Uh, it's only available during the football season, I believe. Uh, so if you go over there right now and ask for it, they probably don't have it. Um, but you should go over anyway because they have a lot of other great beers. Brian, you and I were there just 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 the other day. We sure and, were. Uh, had some strong some, beers. <laughs> some delicious uh, delicious uh, beverages there. Um, but yeah, so as far as Jacksonville is concerned, think about this. Before the Jaguars arrived, mm-hmm. the closest football for um, the Jacksonville residents um, 
not including like, you know, like USFL or something like that. Yeah. Uh, was driving to Gainesville and getting caught in a, a speed trap in Waldo. Um, and so that's where the majority of the fandom, that's where their allegiance is. Um, and, and, you know, Ryan and I were trying to turn the tide, not the yeah. roll tide, the roll tribe. Yeah. We're trying to turn that around. You're in the Jacksonville area. Garnet Old is your, especially if you're in the Jacksonville area, we are your Florida State go to for sure. One thing I want to throw out, Vince, I thought was fun. Um, I read an article just this past week that Tallahassee Vince is getting an arena football team. Saw it. In. Yeah. Now, for those of you that don't know, Tallahassee already had an arena football team. I don't, I couldn't tell you when the last year that they played there was. But I know, if I were to guess, sometime in the early 2000s was probably the last time that they were active. But yeah, Tallahassee is getting a arena football team, which I think makes a lot of sense. Because listen, arena football has been picking up popularity. There's all these new offshoot football leagues and, and basketball leagues with uh, Ice Cube has his basketball lead where it's three on three, which I actually mm-hmm. really enjoy to watch a few of the, the games. And it's pretty entertaining. A lot of retired NBA players that can still go. And so, listen, more sports in the Tallahassee area for the students and, and uh, alumni to enjoy the better because a lot of those semi-pro or, fun, or like side sport teams left Tallahassee and right. and we wanted to be back. And I think it shows that Tallahassee, hey, make, making a come up in the world, right? Yeah. Arena football, by the way, is, is a great is a great uh, event to go to. I mean any one of those kind of minor league sports are kind of like that, right? Um, yep. They, they cater to, to the viewers. They cater to the, to the people that come, they have a bunch of giveaways and fun games going on all the time. And Music. the tickets are reasonable and the food is reasonable. Like the price. Yeah. So, um, and let's face it, college kids don't have a lot of money. Uh, and so, yeah, I think, I think it's going to turn out great. Usually, you know, when a team, when you're saying the old team is no longer there, that's usually because the whole league folded, right? Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not usually because a particular team uh, didn't didn't do well. So I'm excited for that. Um, arena football is great. Yeah, and I could be wrong about this. I don't think I am. That I think in Orlando or Jacksonville or Tampa or somewhere, it was sometime in the mid 2000s. I'm pretty sure I saw BJ Daniels be quarterback for an arena football game that I was at. And I was like, Oh, look, it's BJ Daniels. That's what kind of happens. Whenever you go in an arena game, there'll be a name or two. You're like, that's what they're doing. They're making, sure. 200, they're making $250 a game and, and still getting to play football. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you'll, you know, you'll catch some, uh, Florida state people that, you know, you know, uh, players that didn't make the league or maybe they were in the league a little bit. And now they're not. Yeah. But a lot of them are in, uh, you know, the USFL or the AFL or whatever. Or so. the XFL. A lot of or players. Or the XFL. The XFL. Yeah. Yeah. It's the more football, the better, right? Yeah. I watch and, it all the time. Uh, last thing I'll say, Vince, before we wrap it up, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's a lot of fun. Netflix, the, they have a quarterback uh, show. It centers around three NFL quarterbacks uh and it just shows last season from like training camp all the way through the season and they're like their training and their preparation it's a lot of fun so if you're a nerd like me that likes really any docu-series kind of thing uh go on netflix it should be right near the front page quarterbacks and uh also look out for that johnny menzel documentary and the the swamp kings i as a florida state fan I will still be very intrigued to watch that Swamp Kings documentary because they're going to, I'm sure, cover some uh, what happened after that team kind of thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Some, some controversy. You know, Chris yeah. Leak and Aaron just, Hernandez just just doing some things. Just a little bit. Yeah, that'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, as we wrap this up tonight, um, I want to remind everybody we'll be back next week. We'll have a guest on the show and uh, have some more information to talk about, about uh, the media days and yep. maybe the PAC 12 stuff, but also, you know, keep reminding all of you, all the listeners out there, if you haven't subscribed YouTube, please do. You know, if you haven't liked on Facebook, please do. If you haven't shared, please do. It helps, it helps broaden our reach and it helps, uh, it helps us, you know, make sure that when people are searching for 
Florida yep. State sports streaming or podcasting that we continually rise in the charts. So do your part. Ryan and I try and do our part here. Our listeners, we ask you to do your part. Smash that like button. You know, yep. all that stuff. Please do it. Vince, did you know that right now, Garn Old on podcast services, on Apple Podcasts, has all five-star reviews, 18 of them. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. You're tracking all that stuff. I'm not. Mm. Uh, I, I just, you know, I'm constantly trying to make sure that that people know about us, right? Yeah, um, Garn Old truly is the Charles Lester of podcasts. Yeah, we, we would like people to know. Uh, so if, if you have you have it within you, I encourage you to uh, like, subscribe, and share. Absolutely. Other than that, Vince, it's been a great, uh, great show. Looking forward to next week. A lot of uh, news, I'm sure, to come. Other than that, Garn and Old, no inside info, no contacts, no problem. Go Knowles. Go Knowles.